What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Garage Topics. Today, I've got my Corvette shirt on, I've got my dad pants on. It means we're working on the Corvette today. It's another beautiful day outside here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Just kidding, it's freaking gross and it's so humid that I opened up the garage for maybe 10 seconds and completely moisturized the Corvette, I guess that's what you're into. Um, today, we're gonna jack the back up because there's an oil leak. I don't know if we'll be able to see it because it's dark down here, but there's a seal leak from coming from down here. We replaced this axle. We just, I didn't replace the seal when I did it. Shame on me, but we got the seal, so let's jack the car up, put the seal in, and we've got some other things we need to take care of as well. jack stands. I keep the jack there just to be safe. I might need to zap this wheel off. I'm definitely gonna zap the other one off, but I wanted to show you. No joke, it has legitimately rained a foot here in the past month. And I don't know if you can see it out there, but it's it's flooding everywhere. So it sucks, but it also it's warm. So I'm wearing short sleeve, which means I get to work in the Corvette. So I guess I'd much rather work on the Corvette now than when it's nice that one, I could actually be driving it. So let's get back to work. I mentioned this in a previous video. I got this thing for Christmas. This thing saved my life for doing this whole project. And it, all, it continues to help me out. Uh, it's a big boy half inch Milwaukee. So I think it's 1400 foot pounds of removal torque, which is insane. And 1100 foot pounds of install torques. Before I had to get a big breaker bar to loosen these, then zap them off. But since this has so much power and you can control the power down here, um, it, they just come right off, depending, depending you got the right setting on. Boom. So that way I can take these off with the car up in the air. To get this out and take the control arms off, um, we're also gonna pop out the shock and then this will pop this all backwards out here so we can get the whole axle out. Shouldn't be too hard. Okay, so for getting this control arm off, I always put a little bit of a jack underneath the ball joint down there, or the contr bottom control arm, just barely to take the pressure off. Um, you'll notice that the bolt will come out way easy when you do that. So uh, that bolt came out and I'll show you a trick for getting these out and I, I do this with everything. So I could spend my time yanking back on this as hard as possible to try and get it loose or I could just hit it with the hammer a little bit and that'll act as a leverage point to break it free. So I, I can I can pull up like this as hard as I want to and this one is not honestly that tight but what, what you can do is if you can't get that much leverage on it, you can take a couple whacks to this. And that helps you out. Then you can do the rest of the job. You just need to play with a jack to lower it and raise it just a little bit. You'll see that there'll be a little bit of gap once you start lowering the bolt here. And really there's not that much pressure here at all. So lower the jack, lowers the control arm, gets this out of here. Um, so we mainly just need to get this pivoted back enough so that we can get the axle out. So we need to zap the castle nut out so that it'll allow it to go backwards. So we'll do that now with my big old ugga dugga boy. Thanks brother. This is a 32 millimeter boy. Again, I'm doing this with one hand. If I didn't have this, life would be impossible. I'm gonna turn it up to, oh, sorry that blinded you. There's a setting that will zap it as hard as it can and once it sees it, it's free, it'll slow it down. So. Again, one-handed. No big deal. That If I didn't have that, I would have been freaking out with a breaker bar or something. Makes life so much easier. Thanks, little boy. All right, this was enough angle to get this out. I just pried on it, pushed, used the CV bit to push it in a little bit, and it popped right out. Um, so now we're just gonna pull this out. You've seen in the other video, I just pulled it out. It shouldn't leak fluid because of how it is. I don't know how long this fluid's been in here, so once we get this out and replace the seal, I've gotten you fluid. We'll replace the fluid and show you how to do that as well. Double time. All right, I just spent 20, 30 minutes underneath the car. I've done this before. I don't know why it was so difficult, but you gotta put a screwdriver in behind the back of the CV axle and the diff to just pop it out. There's a C-clip that holds it in place, but uh, I'll show you the screwdriver I use. It's a big boy. It was this thing. I popped it out. I was tugging on it, tugging on it, it wouldn't do anything, and then all of a sudden I just started jiggling it, and just, n it wasn't hard to get out, but the amount of force I was putting on it prior was not popping it out, so I'd recommend just jiggling it a little bit, and then all of a sudden it'll pop right out, 
and now we'll slide this out. That is the axle here, the axle um, differential seal. Where it's all rusty, that whole thing comes out. So you can kind of see from the fins, um, you can put a screwdriver back in here and pry this out, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So we'll do that, pry the seal out, clean it up. I want to make sure there's no other seals, uh, leaks in the future. So I might spray this up with Prate Cleaner right now, then pop the seal, then we'll be good to go. There we go. Yeah, see that? Oh, yeah. That's where we need to be. So how does this pry out? The internet makes things look a whole lot easier. All right, I'm underneath the car right now. I got this thin boy. The flange of this, the metal rusted thing you see, is paper thin and it butts right up against the diff. So I just came under here, whacked it with a hammer, which gave me the access to get to the lip, which, let's see if you can see me doing any work here. See, there it goes. I think I can just work this out. I don't know if it's gonna leak all over me, but we're about to find out. Nope, boom! Gotcha, bitch. Sorry, kids. New boy, old boy. Um, yeah, it's got a little bit of difference here. Definitely look like the spring's bigger, which is good, but got this from Rock Auto. This is an OEM, so we'll see how long it lasts, and I'll report if it's if it sucks, I'll let you know, but we're popping this back in. I've cleaned it all up in there, so make sure there's no dust on this left, and we'll pop it right back into the differential. All right. I got the seal in. I ended up using a rubber mount and just slightly tapping around each side there. It's and you're so far away from it that it's pretty hard to get in there. So use this and just slide, just barely, just tap here, tap here, tap there, tap up there, and it went in. And the way that you can tell, you can feel your finger at the back of that metal lip, and that there is no gap between it, the seal and the diff. That's no when you know it's good. So all the stuff to do is put the axle back in. Yep. It's all bolted back together now. I mean, it took no time at all to get it back together. I've done it so many times now. Again, look how humid it is. It rusted these rotors up within like the time I was doing it, like an hour. Crazy. So I'll set the wheel on, and then we need to get to changing the oil in the diff, and we're also going to change out the reverse light signal. I'm hoping that it comes in the mail. It's supposed to come today. So that's what the internet tells me. So everything the internet says is right. So let's get to that. I just got to check my email. It says that... The sensor, the switch was delivered. It's in my mailbox. So all I gotta do now is go out to the mailbox, but it's pouring rain, so I ain't got time for that. The diff drain and fill is in the back here. All right, here's my garage topics pro tip for the day. Make sure that the fill plug is loose before you loosen the drain plug. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bad day and not be able to get any fluid back in it. So this is loose, so now we can move on to the drain plug, which is down, down here. All right, boom. Ugh. This is gross. Ugh. I don't know if this plug is magnetic or not, but I don't see anything terrible, but it's just a fluid. It is gross. Not only I'm all about supporting car companies and stuff like that, but Amazon had the killer deal on this. The limited slip gear oil, it was by far the cheapest when you included shipping, so. Unfortunately, right now, that's where I recommend you get your rear diff fluid. So, I think it takes 1.6, something like that. Not fully all of it. We'll fill it up, and what'll happen once it starts draining out the fill plug, that's when we know we've got enough. So, I've got a little pump that's gonna screw in this. It'll make our lives a thousand times easier. Finally stopped raining, but it's dark out, but it's it's almost 70 degrees out, it's crazy. So, it means I was able to go to the mail. I got this from Rock Auto, added another magnet to my wall of, I was gonna say wall of shame, but not, nothing to be ashamed of right here. It's one of the badges of honor up here. So this is the reverse switch. The reverse slides, uh, when it goes into reverse, it's this little button, goes to this connector, it's pretty simple, that's all it is. This sensor is on the, the passenger side. Internet was wrong, I can't believe it. I've listened to the internet my entire life. So I'm going down there with this 22 millimeter and this big old hammer. I'm just gonna loosen it up with that and then get it out and then slap the new one in. Everything on the internet says that I'm not gonna get soaked with transmission fluid, but based on before, who knows? That's the boy right there. I'll slap the wrench on. Get, Get out the way, bro. 
All right, and then that's one for one. This plugs out, didn't leak. I don't, I'm not liking the signs of this. I was expecting this to be really gross because it was old and that's why it shorted out, but it looks fairly new. So I'll put the new one in and if it, the fuse doesn't pop, well, what's happening is every time you put the reverse lights on it, the fuse pops, which makes the reverse lights not work, which everything tells me that this is shorting out, which is the fuse is doing its job. But this looks new, so we'll put the new one in and then see if the fuse pops and if it doesn't, we've got some wiring issue or something else going on. All right, we got the switch done. Now we need to move inside the car for that reverse light. So it, I don't know why it doesn't make any sense at all, but 21, oh, they can't even see that. 21 fuse is Bitsu Boo. Uh, it's hard to read, but it's Bitsu Boo. So 21 on here is right there, that number 10. That one pops every time you put it into reverse. I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna take that fuse out, replace it with a good fuse, then turn the car on and see if reverse actually works. And not only is it gonna help my reverse lights, that same fuse is the rear view dimmer. So I won't get blinded at night. And I'll tell people I'm reversing so I don't get hit. Win-win. First, I'm gonna just turn it on without putting it in uh, reverse. That green light there, I haven't had on before because it would pop every time I put it in reverse. So hopefully what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna put it in reverse and that light is not gonna pop and the actual reverse signal is gonna work. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, crap. Look at that. Not only do we have reverse lights. Whew. Not only do we have reverse lights, but we've got a review camera. What's, I got another video about that. That's a huge thing. So that is sweet. That is awesome. That just saved my life, both being able to see reverse and not getting blinded. That was easy. That was like $10 fix. All right, it's another day. It's actually the next day. I took her for a spin this morning to make sure that there wasn't any leaks coming from the seal and I didn't see any. So the only one thing left to do that I want to get done this weekend, it revolves around the, uh, the catch can. Catch can is set up fine from what I believe, but I've held everything with zip ties. So there was a mount a kit for the head that I've purchased. It just went missing. Um, it normally comes with a Mighty Mouse catch can. So I cut the zip ties and I reattach this catch can to the head. That way we've got a secure place for this to go on. And then we're ready to basically give it a wash and maybe actually drive it today. Here's the kit, got a sticker. I'm, I've got a bunch of stickers. I'm gonna throw them on the car in a little bit. Um, so here's the bracket. Just use these two bolts, mounts to the head. So this attaches to the head and this top bit here attaches to the back clamp of the can and secures it in place. So. Let's throw that on now. All right, that took no time at all. It's hard to see the mount, but now this is permanently mounted to the head. Um, it's a little close to this pulley here, but it's not going anywhere at all. So that's as much flex as it has. I'll keep an eye on it. The zip tie is keeping it tight as well. So keep an eye on it, but that's a more secure way to do it. All right, so those are the things we need to do to get the car good again. I'm gonna do some more test driving. It's gonna be boring test driving, so I'm not gonna bring you along. I am gonna close out here. I'm gonna wash the car up and give you some shots at the end of that so hopefully that's fresh and cool club duty fresh thanks a lot for watching be sure to subscribe like comment if you have any questions about the car or these cars in general just let me know i'm happy to answer any questions you guys have any have at all um make sure your dog doesn't eat any soap when you're washing the car because you could get sick from that peace out have fun club duty fresh about to be done I need to dry it off but I just want to show you a new friend Holly what are you doing she's one of the neighbor's dogs she likes chilling in the sun Ernie boy our dog does not like her which is unfortunate but she chills outside while I work on the car you've probably seen her in other videos but here's a channel debut make it hot make it hot yeah don't eat the suds don't eat the suds